welcome back again to the extended hand in hand watercolor week. We are going through some different background ideas. Uh, yesterday I did a video showing you how to add some watercolor look to the pathway stencil. And so we started out our card with that. And today we're going to move on and we're going to add some more background details. So I just wanted to show you uh, and talk a little bit about some things that we're going to do in the video. Uh, this is a card that I did when the Hand in Hand stamp set was first introduced along with the Pathway stencil and the Fur and Foliage number one stencils which I used here on the sides just to create kind of some branches and uh, just a hint of that along the edges of the card. And so we're going to create something a little bit similar to this today but instead of um, her with the umbrella and kind of a reflection. We're going to put the little girl with the dog on the pathway and I think we're going to put her in a field of daisies and so we'll see how that works out. Um, so this card I wanted to show you, against my better judgment, um, I wanted to show you the first attempt I did at this card which was much less than successful. And I just kind of wanted to show you, um, the only reason this is not in the garbage is because I wanted to show it to you and what not to do. So my, the lesson, the biggest lesson I learned the first attempt of this card was that I tried too hard to fill in every area of the background. You don't need to do that. Just go ahead and let the different elements kind of have some breathing room and don't feel like you need to fill up the entire background. Just watercolor can be very forgiving in that a lot of times you just need kind of a suggestion of something and the the other person who's viewing it their mind can kind of fill in some of the rest of the details and and just kind of you just need a suggestion of things sometimes. So don't feel like you need to absolutely create this detailed scene that covers the whole background of your card. Just kind of give some suggestions of elements and and let the areas have a little bit of breathing room. So you can see here I tried way too hard. I had way too much way too much going on here in my sky, too much paint, too much color. Just it, it, it was a disaster. So I tried again and I was much much happier by just um, kind of n not trying so hard to cover the whole thing and just letting everything breathe a little bit. All right, so let's continue on and we will keep that in mind as we go along. So like I said, we're, our, we are going to try to put our cute little girl, she has her little white dress on and her puppy, and we're going to try to put her in a field of daisies. And so first of all, what we're going to do is I'm going to take some masking fluid and this is Windsor and Newton masking fluid and I'm going to mask off some daisies. And so I'm just going to pour a little bit of that in my lid. Now when you're using masking fluid, uh, don't use a brush that you love <laughs> because um, it's really hard on your brush and you might not get it completely washed out. So just use an old brush or something that you're not in love with. And so we're going to go ahead and take some masking fluid and paint some daisies. Now we're not, like I said, watercolor a lot of times you can get by with kind of the suggestion of something. And so don't feel like you need to paint these like exact uh, daisies. We're going to just kind of paint some, we're just going to do some brush strokes and kind of the suggestion of daisies and just keep in mind your um, perspective. And so up front here we're going to create some that are a little bit larger because they're of course closer to us in the scene. And then we'll make some smaller ones um, as we go towards the, the horizon line. And I should have mentioned that as well too. We're going to kind of use this point right here at the top of that pathway as kind of our horizon line. And so we'll keep that in mind as we go along and add the different elements. And you can see I'm not doing anything really spectacular <laughs> at all here. Just kind of some brush strokes, almost just a kind of the suggestion of a daisy shape. 
and I'm just scattering those all around. Try not to um, make them so even, not so evenly spaced that they're like perfectly spaced. That's always kind of a trick for me. I'm, I can be kind of like to have things like in the in an order or I randomness can be a little bit hard for me sometimes but we're going to be getting smaller here as we go back towards this horizon and maybe these back here on the horizon are just more of almost dots so they're getting really tiny as we head back to that area And then we'll put some over on this side as well. Again, you want some little bit larger ones over here, right up close where you're the closest and they would appear to be the largest. And then we'll work on getting smaller as we head this way. All right, now we need to let that embossing or that masking fluid dry completely. So I will let that dry and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so we're back. Our masking fluid is dry and now we can continue on with our scene. So I'm going to wet uh, the bottom area, actually a little more than that, um, this from just above the pathway to um, the rest of the area down to the bottom of the panel. I'm going to wet with some water so we can do some wet on wet. And so I'm just going to put my water line right up here along the path and then make sure this whole area is nice and wet. I'm painting right over top of our masking fluid, of course, which is the whole purpose of masking fluid. And then I'm going to take some green watercolor and we're just going to kind of drop it in right along the pathway. And we're going to kind of let it flow and kind of fill in the rest of this area here. I'm not going to fill it in completely, so we'll just kind of let We'll, we'll probably pull a little bit, but we're going to start with it just along that pathway edge. And we'll kind of let it flow. I'm going to pull a little bit up into this area. But like I said, we want to let our elements have some breathing room. And as we get over to the horizon area over here in the more where it's more in the distance, I want it a little bit darker back there. And you can see our daisies that we masked are kind of showing up here. So I'm going to drop in some darker areas too, just to create some interest. Just right here along the path and this is all wet on wet and so the colors are just going to kind of blend together. So I'm going to soften this edge here a little bit. And let that just kind of fade off. so we're not going to mess with that a whole lot. I'm going to let that just kind of be. We'll add some sky up here a little bit later. And I'm going to do the same thing over here on this side of the path. I'm going to start with just some water and get this nice and wet right here along the pathway. And this whole area here we will make that all wet.
Okay, and then again, we'll just drop in some color right here along that edge of the pathway. And you might need to go in and kind of clean up some of your edges. But we're going to add some more details along the edge of the pathway once this is dry. So you don't have to get too, too concerned about it. And then again, we'll kind of try to darken up this area off in the distance. And I want a little more color down here so that we can see some of those daisies a little better that we masked off. But I'm not going to fill it in completely. I'm going to just let these edges just kind of fade off. I'm going to add just a little bit of darkness right along the edge of the path in a few areas just to add a little more interest. Okay, so I think that's a really good start. We're going to move up here and we're going to add um, some blue in the sky as well. And we're going to use, again, kind of just a wet on wet. So I will go ahead and wet this area. And we'll meet up with the grass. In fact, I want to just add a little more green here. I don't want such a hard line. Okay, so we're going to wet this whole area up in the sky. You might want to use, I'm not using a very big brush here. I should be a little easier to grab, but just a little bit bigger brush, but we'll make this work. I'm just going to wet this whole area up here in the sky. And then we'll go ahead and add just some color, some blue. We're not going to make it real solid. We're just going to kind of drop it in here and there. Leaving some white areas for clouds. Adding in a few darker areas here and there. And then you can always go in and blot out a few areas for some clouds, more dis dis more defined clouds. And if you wanted to, you could kind of fill in this little bit of an area here with just a little bit of blue. Maybe there's some water over there. Just added a few just very subtle strokes. Okay, and I think we're going to stop right there and we're going to let this dry and then we'll come back and we'll add some grass and some details to our daisies after we take off our masking fluid. Okay, so that's dry enough that we can continue working. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rub off all of our masking fluid so that our daisies uh, show up nice and white and bright here. You can see that masking fluid is a little bit yellow and so then when you brush it off, you have these nice white areas. You can use like a gum eraser for this as well if you'd like, but it's just there's not very much of it on here and so your finger should work 
just as well. Okay, so there are our little daisies and we are going to add some centers to those to just kind of define them a little bit. And so I'm going to take some yellow and then just dot in some centers. And those daisies are not perfect by any means. They're just kind of there. It's kind of a suggestion of a little flower. But adding that center to those really just helps convey that idea a little bit more. Okay, and then we will add, I'm going to take a smaller brush and we're going to add some grass, uh, more defined grass and stems to our daisies. And so I'll take some darker green and we'll just add just some brush strokes to kind of suggest some stems and some grass, especially right along the path. I like to add some grass. And don't make everything so even, just make sure you have kind of some randomness in there. Nature is never perfect or perfectly even or perfectly spaced. Then we'll add some stems and grass on this side also. And this side, I want to kind of extend that grass up into the path because if you were viewing it from this side, that grass would look like it was sticking above the path a little bit. Kind of fun. You never know what you're gonna get when you do the the masking fluid. Just kind of random, and you can see how this little cluster here turned out kind of cute. It wasn't really planned. You just kind of gotta go with what you end up with. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how that's turning out. Now I'm going to use my fur and foliage number one stencils to add some branches on the sides to kind of fill in this area a little. All right, so I'm going to be using just the two steps of the stencil that are the top of the tree. I'm not going to be using the branch or uh, trunk portion of the stencil, the third step or actually it's probably the first step which you would normally do the first step. I just want the hint of some branches over here and so I'm not going to use that stencil. I'm going to start off with the treetop stencil here and just kind of give some branches over here in this area. And I'm going to be using a couple shades of uh, Distress Oxide ink. I have Twisted Citron and Peeled Paint. And so with this first step, we'll start off with the lighter shade, the Twisted Citron. And we're just going to lightly sponge some of that ink 
over the top of the stencil. Now I've used this stencil enough that I'm pretty um, pretty good at lining it up, but if you need a little bit of help lining it up, you might want to make a, just a couple pencil marks um, along the edge of your stencil to help you uh, with the position of the second step. Okay, so that's good, and then I'm going to take my second step and we'll layer that over the top. Alright, so then we're going to switch to our darker shade of green and stencil that over the top to add some added color and dimension there. All right, so that's a pretty good, um, pretty good look there. I'm trying to decide if I want to add just a little bit over here as well, kind of to this area, just a tad. And so I might do that just right in here. And then we'll go ahead and add the second step. Darker shade of green. And that helped just kind of, I don't know, give this area a little bit of, I don't know, we have a little mystery there. Where's the path going? Kind of creates, kind of helps with this area here that's a little bit tricky. How do you make the path disappear into the horizon? that tree, just those little branches kind of help with that. All right, so I feel like our background is pretty well finished and then we can just go ahead and add our little girl and her dog and we'll probably stamp a sentiment up here in this area to balance it out a little bit and it'll be finished. All right guys, so that is a few different background ideas and techniques and uh, we might, I might do another video showing how to do kind of a reflection. Maybe we'll use the little boy and the umbrella and we'll create a, a reflection, but that might have to wait a little while. We are actually going to be starting with sneak peeks of our June collection starting tomorrow on the blog and then we will be right in the middle of that. And so we might pick this back up again a little bit after the June release if there is interest in that in, in seeing a video on that. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you back here soon.